When I say pollinators, you think bees. And yes, bees are the most common pollinator on the planet, but bees aren't the only pollinators. In this video, I'm gonna explore several different ways you can pollinate your plants in a greenhouse for better produce production, including, but not limited to, bees. Believe it or not, there are actually hundreds of other natural pollinators you can use. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel, has tons of other videos on greenhouses you can check out after you watch this one. If you're serious about growing in a greenhouse and want to grow flowering plants, which includes many fruits and vegetables, you got to take a good hard look at pollination. And for those of you that are allergic to bees, you're in luck. This video will explore several methods of pollinating your plants other than just using bees. Of course, we're gonna start with bees though. Bees are the go-to subject when someone mentions pollinators. There are many different kinds of bees, but for greenhouse pollination, you have two choices. You can either leave the windows open and hope some local bees fly in and do their job, or you can buy some bees and keep them in the greenhouse as your personal pollinators. There are all kinds of species of bees, but it really comes down to one real choice. The three main types are honeybees, bumblebees, and leaf cutter. Alfalfa leaf cutters are nicknamed the garden bee because they pollinate garden plants over a hundred times more efficiently than honeybees. Alfalfa leaf cutters are roughly 50 times more efficient than bumblebees. Leaf cutter bees are also the smallest pollination bee and can fly into the tiniest blossoms that bumblebees can't. Alfalfa leaf cutter bees are native to the United States there are not currently any states or provinces that require permits for housing leafcutter bees. This is due to the low risk that leafcutters pose compared to other native bees. Leafcutter bees are shipped while in a dormant stage inside cocoons. This prevents them from feeling the stress and disorientation of shipping. Leafcutter bees will spend their entire lifespan from hatching until death pollinating your greenhouse. That means more working time for you and your money. The downside to alfalfa leafcutter bees are the holes they cut in leaves for filling their tubes. Raspberry plants are a favorite for the leafcutter bee and will decrease holes in other plants if there is one available in the greenhouse. So it pays to have one raspberry plant for your bees to munch on. You can buy leafcutter bees online from a number of bee sellers or from some farm supply stores. Google is your best friend in finding a local bee seller close to you. I'm gonna go over a bunch of other pollination methods in this video but for practical purposes, leaf cutter bees are the most efficient and affordable pollinator for a large greenhouse and outside. As their name implies, alfalfa leaf cutter bees massively increase alfalfa crop production, which is why you often see alfalfa farmers put leaf cutter beehives in their fields. If you can't use someone else, you might as well do it yourself. It's possible for you to pollinate your greenhouse by yourself, by hand, manually. There might be some specialized brushes out there, but any small soft painting brush or even a cotton swab will do. Hand pollination, often called mechanical pollination, can even be done with your fingertip, but a brush makes things so much easier. It helps to identify the male and female versions of flowers. And once again, Google is your best friend here in trying to determine which is the male and female flower of your plant species. There are bisexual plants too, such as tomatoes, where all you have to do is shake the flowers to get them to pollinate. Warning, I do not suggest doing this with human bisexuals. They have legal rights and do not walk up to someone with the intent of shaking them into pollination without their explicit permission. With your bisexual plants though, you can feel free to shake the heck out of them anytime to get them to pollinate. For species that have male and female flowers, in most cases you identify where the pollen is, which is usually the center of the flower, and gently stroke it a few times getting the pollen on the brush, and then take that brush to the female flower and paint the pollen inside. It's not that this is difficult, but it is time consuming, and you have to do it for every flower. Depending on the size of your greenhouse, this could be a 10 minute operation a day, or a full time job for a dozen people. Another method of pollinating with many different types of plants is to take the center of a male flower off or out and then use that piece of the flower directly rubbing it on the female flowers. 
This allows for much more pollen to transfer, and one male flower can actually pollinate a lot of female flowers. I heard there might be a reality TV show in the works on this subject, similar to Sister Wives, called Sister Flowers, about a greenhouse in Utah. Okay, I gotta stop with the jokes or I'm gonna get in trouble soon. Amnophility or wind pollination is a form of pollination whereby pollen is distributed among plants by the wind that blows outside. Grasses, sledges, and rushes pollinate this way and many common foods we eat like lettuce, spinach, tomatoes, wheat, rye, rice, beans, peas, beets, and corn are all pollinated by the wind. This presents a problem in a greenhouse as there is little wind inside. You'd think that's where fans come in, but fans for some reason aren't hugely effective for pollination. I think it's the random directions and intensity of the wind that's hard to mimic indoors. A much better method is to manually shake the plants and a step further is to buy a vibrating device, much like an electric toothbrush, to stimulate your plant so much that your plant thinks it's outside and pollinates for you. Be careful not to overstimulate your plant breaking it as broken flowers don't grow. Honestly, bees do a much better job, but you can do this manually by shaking bisexual plants for effective results. It's actually beneficial not to have screens on your windows and let the natural pollinators in to help with pollination whenever possible. So although the wind works outside, and if you have an outside garden, this is a viable method of pollination. Inside, a greenhouse recreating the wind doesn't seem to have the same good results. And additional manual pollination procedures have to be implemented if you want to have a bumper crop. Hummingbirds are the smallest of birds, and there are over 350 species of hummingbirds that exist. The smallest hummingbird of all is the bee hummingbird, which is actually the smallest bird of any kind. A male bee hummingbird is only a little over 5 centimeters long and weighs less than 2 grams, not even half the weight of a nickel. Hummingbirds have extremely fast metabolisms, so they're always hungry. They need to consume around half their own body weight every day, which is mostly made up from nectar, but also small insects and spiders. Brightly colored flowers that are tubular hold the most nectar and are particularly attractive to hummingbirds. Hummingbird pollinated flowers tend to have significantly more pollen than insect pollinated flowers. This means hummingbirds tend to pollinate different plants than insects. Hummingbirds tend to focus on these bright tubular flowers, so using hummingbirds as pollinators seems to be limited to greenhouse operations that grow this specific type of flower. I'm not aware of any commercial operation using hummingbirds to pollinate their flowers, but if anyone watching this knows of someone who has successfully used hummingbirds to pollinate their crop, even if that crop is just flowers, please post in the description below. Bees aren't the only insect that can pollinate plants. Wasps are a lot like bees. As an insect group, on the whole, wasps are generally thought to be less efficient pollinators than their bee cousins. The most notable wasp pollinators are the fig wasps, which pollinate the tiny flowers inside the developing fig fruit. Pollination by ants is relatively rare, but it does occur. Since most ants walk from flower to flower, any pollen exchange conducted by ants will be limited to a small portion of the plants. Many flies prefer to feed on flowers and in doing so provide essential pollination services to the plants they visit. Nearly half of the 150 fly families visit flowers. Opening your windows in your greenhouse brings in flies with the local bees. Both will help to pollinate your plants. A mosquito's favorite food is nectar. Anytime an insect drinks nectar, there's a good chance it's going to collect and transfer a little pollen. Mosquitoes are known to pollinate certain orchards and can certainly help to pollinate your greenhouse when you leave the windows open. Moths and butterflies also pollinate plants, gorging on nectar and transferring pollen when they go flower to flower. Beetles and other insects do their part as well as pollen sticks to most any insect that comes looking for a plant's nectar as that's how plants transfer genetic material. If you know of any other insects used to pollinate a greenhouse, 
please post it in the comments below. To summarize, there are piles of insects and even some birds that pollinate plants. But if you have a greenhouse, you really have two options. In the spring, summer and fall, you can open your windows and let a range of insects in to pollinate your plants. And you might even get lucky and see a hummingbird. Or you can close up the windows and buy some leaf cutter bees. Of course, you can also paint the plants yourself, but time makes this a less viable option the bigger your greenhouse gets. Pollination dramatically increases produce production. So if you want more produce, pollination is the easiest way to make more money in a greenhouse. Don't forget to check out my other videos on practical, effective technology from Simple Tech. The more you learn, the more you earn. See you next time.